President Yuri Museveni attends the East African Community Heads of State Conclave in Nairobi while the opposition in Parliament seeks a budget increment. A very good evening to you tuned into UBC TV. A warm welcome to UBC News tonight, this 20th day of June 2022. My name is Michael Jordan Lukomwa. The lady in the sign language corner is Elizabeth Nakakoni. President Yuri Kaguta Museveni in our first story has joined the East African heads of state in Nairobi to discuss regional issues and matters connected to security. The third East African community heads of state conclave on the peace and security situation in the DRC uh, is chaired by President Uhuru Kenyatta of Kenya. President Museveni is back home and we have details to this report. President Yoweri Museveni has returned from Nairobi, Kenya, where he has been on a one-day official visit. In Nairobi, Museveni joined other East African heads of state to discuss regional issues and matters connected to the security situation in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. The East African Committee Conclave, under the chairmanship of President Uhuru Kenyatta of Kenya, whose members are Kenya, Diara Congo, Rwanda, Burundi and Uganda, was set up to encourage dialogue between rebels and the Congolese government. The third East African Community Heads of State Conclave on the peace and security situation in the Democratic Republic of Congo comes a few days after Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta called for the deployment of a regional East African Community Force in Eastern DRC to restore peace. Mr. Museveni, via his Twitter handle, said the problems affecting the region, like the crisis in Congo, need a collective approach from all regional members of the East African community. He insisted on working together to stop the suffering of people of the Democratic Republic of Congo. On the morning of June 13, M23 rebels took control of Bunagana, a city in the eastern North Kivu province from the Congolese military, according to media reports. The meeting was also attended by Rwanda's President Paul Kagame, that of South Sudan, Salva Kiel, and Everest Ndahishimiye of Burundi. Karibu sana mzee. Asante. Earlier, President Museveni was received at State House Nairobi, Kenya by His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta, the chairperson of the East African Community. UBC News. Prime Minister Robin Nabanja has threatened to enforce free education in government-aided schools when the Paris development model is rolled out. During the State of the Nation address recently, President Museveni was concerned over some head teachers who charge fees in government schools. While addressing Christians at Chatiri Catholic Church in Masindi district, Nabanja stressed that head teachers who cannot heed to the directive of the president must resign. Nabanja appealed to teachers to return to classes because the government has a comprehensive plan to enhance salaries of all workers. The Buyaga West legislator Banabastinka Simire asked government to also invest more in agriculture in Vunyoro as it has done to Renzori sub-region as the district chairperson held government support. 
Cosmas Biaruhanga, the Masindi LC5 chairman, commended the government for allocating funds for the rehabilitation of Masindi Hospital, which has been limping for some time, and also other sectors. Reverend Francis Komaketch, the dean of Chigumba Catholic Parish, asked Christians to always support God's projects, such as construction of worshipping places. The Prime Minister donated 20 million shillings towards roofing of the church at Chatiri. The Congolese refugee transit camp at Nyakabande in Kisoro district have been hit by COVID-19 pandemic. According to the head of COVID-19 task force in Kisoro, the RDC Haj Shafiq Sekandi, there are over 399 cases registered in less than a week. As Philip Aguta reports from Kisoro district, the isolation center is overwhelmed. <laughs> Just one week since M23 rebels the fighting Congolese government took control of Bunagana town. The refugees that came to Uganda have been hit by COVID-19. The head of the task force in Kisoro district, RDC Haj Shafiq Sekandi, says in the last one week over 399 cases have been registered. We have a challenge in Nyakabande of COVID-19. Uh, many people now have been tested on arrival every asylum seeker is checked at the gate one to ensure that they don't have harmful items from the war zone two to ensure they don't have diseases you know congo has covid it has ebola it has measles and many others so covid 19 has also been detected in the nyakabande trans center and the screening is done almost every day the isolation center has been overwhelmed as COVID numbers increase. The isolation center is a, was created within the, the camp and the, it's now getting full. We want to create another one within the camp. But people who are also found sick within the, the outside communities of Solo are managed in the hospital. To contain the situation, the district has opted for a fresh vaccination driver that will kickstart this Tuesday. Uh, starting a massive COVID-19 vaccination again in Iksolo on, on tomorrow. This is a, a new campaign because in the first round, Kisolo performed well. We got 95, but the second round, the vaccination was at 56%. So we want to ensure that people get the second jab and be safer. As you are aware, Congo is under war, so these programs of vaccination are not there. That's why we suspect that this third wave mainly has come along with it. There are some seekers and has entered Uganda. The refugee crisis started on Monday last week when M23 rebels fighting the Congo government took over Bunagana town. And since then, Uganda has received over 32,000 refugees. Philip Aguta for UBC News in Kisoro. Ministry of Internal Affairs will destroy over 30,000 uncollected processed passports. The ministry spokesperson Simon Munde says that some applicants provided wrong contacts. These over 30,000 uncollected processed passports at the Chambogo Collection Center are posing a burden of storage and the Ministry of Internal Affairs intends to destroy them. We are now having about 30,000 passports in our stores in Chambogo. The owners are not coming to pick them. Now, the ministry is planning to destroy passports that have been processed and have taken a year in store. The ministry is planning to destroy these passports because we do not have where to keep these passports. The Ministry of Internal Affairs has issued a directive requiring those in labor export business to conduct a body organ check of their clients. This is due to the escalating challenges of bodies organ trade. This of course as a result of uh, a lot of uh, cries we have had. Some people say they went with all their organs on return some organs are missing. So we, the government has come up to protect them. Labor export companies are required to foot bills of medical check at departure. We ask the companies that take people out to first incur that cost of ensuring that these 
labor migrants have uh, all of their organs, the heart, the kidney, before going out to work. Meanwhile, the traffic directorate has threatened a crackdown on illegal driving schools. These are preserved to have direct connection to road accidents. You must have an operating license to train people how to drive. Most of the driving schools out there, the license are expired and they are not bothered to renew them. And on the same note, we warn whoever is operating a driving school illegally. We are going to do operations. In a period of 12th to 10th June 2022, the directorate registered 355 accidents, of which 50 were fatal, claiming 57 lives, 204 serious, and 101 minor. Lydia Chomkama, UBC News. The FDC has asked government to use the funds allocated to mindset change and classified budget in the financial year in this financial year to increase salaries of arts teacher instead the deputy secretary general of the party harold kaija says that government should come up with a salary structure according to the costs of living Forum for Democratic Change Opposition Party has supported the strike by arts teachers over salary that government needs to address. The arts teachers went on strike on June 15th, protesting discriminatory salary enhancement, which led to a number of schools to close. FDC says disparity in salaries between science and art teachers is wrong. The Deputy Secretary General FDC Harold Kaija says this arrangement is frustrating to teachers and students. Welcome the proposal of increasing size of some teachers. This is condemnation of the arts teacher. Science board would have a competent people to review all the size of this country and look at the importance of every profession and then determine their salaries. Because in serious countries, now you've given them four million. After five years, it will be peanuts. The same struggle will be back. The party proposes that government adjusts this financial year's budget on the money allocated to mindset change to increase salaries of art teachers. Money and where to find it, we are giving them advice. That man of my mindset change put it to the, to the art teacher's salaries. That man of that 15 billion for starters. Go and chop some other billions from classified. The party is dissatisfied with the way court handles cases of opposition politicians. So actually bail is given to you so that you have that partial freedom as investigations are going on. But today we see, you see in the court state attorneys receiving cheats. We saw it at LODC. We even saw it. In the Dr. Kizabese's case, somebody was actually behind, seated, sending cheats concerning this very matter. FDC proposes that the elite should work towards creating stronger institutions and ensure everyone is equal before the law. I'm Navka Farida and Stephen Kalisia in Kampala. The National Unity Platform, new members of parliament and as a leading opposition party in parliament have made a year as legislators and they claim to have achieved uh, a number of, uh, they are to have accomplished a number of achievements as MPs. The leader of opposition in parliament, Matthias Mpoga, says that they have plans to put up hard fights on the land amendment proposals. Opposition in Parliament, led by Matthias Simpoga, addressed journalists at Parliament upon completing the first session of the 11th Parliament and the new entrants marking their first anniversary as legislators. He says that the leadership in Parliament needs to consider the budget of the office of the leader of the opposition. But the whole issue is that we um, would have loved to have more resources, especially to go to the public and establish whether public funds voted for uh, public works have been actually properly utilized and also empower our teams, recruit more staff to provide the technical backstopping to our political team. 
The leader of the opposition, Matthias Simpoga, says in the last one year, members have successfully dealt with statements, motions, matters of national importance and minority reports. And I think the public appreciated what parliament eventually did in terminating that agreement between uh, government of Uganda and uh, Vinch Coffee. He notes that in the next session they will fight the land amendment proposals. Has been lost, but if as they propose this particular law, be ready for a motion uh, from the, our side to inquire into the loss of public land um, that we have been investigating quietly. Um, probably the two will move hand in hand, but the inquest into the loss of public land at the hands of uh, some of these uh, politicians. Previous attempts to amend um, the 1967 law relating to land acquisition were unsuccessful. I doubt any serious member of parliament can allow government to compulsorily take people's land. However, Mpoga and his members had some challenges. But then action gets to be taken. You know, people are given a timeline of about six months for action to be taken. But, and, and we expect that people should be fired, people should be locked up. We hope that even a day can come when people's properties can be sold and then the taxpayer's money gets to be reinstated. So that has not happened. Shamim Naiga and Gloria Gutabenji, Parliament. The police anti Anti-narcotic have arrested four suspects who were trading drugs in Kampala Secondary Schools. Police spokesperson Fred Enanga says that these have been mixing dangerous substances into edibles for students' consumption. So which are drug list and... Uh the police narcotics department has arrested dealers in drugs over trading narcotic substances in secondary schools in Kampala Metropolitan. The four arrested include Masanga Rachel, Kasozi Suleiman, Ayo Joshua, and Imbabas Jovia, residents of Ukungu in Ikira Division. Sticks that are being supplied as well in schools. So you can see how dangerous this group uh, basically is, and uh, we recover. The act had become perennial with routine customers in secondary schools between the age brackets of 13 to 20 years. Next uh, cookies tend to help uh, teenagers and young and, uh, and students after consumption to, you know, to go high. That's the term that they use. You, you consume it and you go high and uh, enables you to enjoy the party to maximum. The special package of these narcotic mixed edibles could not save students' appetite despite attached prices. So we are going to charge these ones with drug trafficking, uh, uh, on drug, drug trafficking charges being in possession of narcotic substances. And uh, it is something we cannot tolerate because illicit drugs are harmful to individuals. Uh, to families and the community. In other police operations last week, another ADF training hub was discovered in Ibusimbi, Lelwe Zone, Mitiana District, at the home of Jime Kaizi. Sixteen suspects were arrested for recruiting juveniles. And uh, we also recovered uh, military-like attire, jungle boots, electronic gadgets, two mobile phones, and we managed to transfer these to SID Chireka, where we are processing them uh, on uh, uh, subversive uh, tendencies and so on. The regional police of Kampa Metropolitan South says it arrested suspects who are connected to notorious robberies in Kampala Metropolitan. The arrested include Mutawe Faizo, Sendaula Ashraf, Baliko Wa Mohamed, Maweje Jonathan, and Mbaba Zito Pista. We recovered the rifle that they stole from uh, uh, Valley Petroleum in Insanji. Uh, they had used the, the four ammunitions that were in, so we got an empty magazine. We got the ignition key for the Isuzu Elf truck, UAX311U, and we also recovered the bajaj that had been stolen uh, by this gang. 
and in Kampala, police are tracing Dixon Emaso over conning police officers, promising them of refresher courses and automatic promotions. Abdul Nasser Lubwama, UBC News. Police officers being conned is not a story usual uh, in anyone's ears, but we thank you so much for watching. Emeritus Justice George Wilson Kanyehamba has refuted allegations that he withdrew the petition he had filed against the Attorney General. He was challenging President Museveni's move on the removal of bail to capital offenders. Kanyehamba was addressing the media at his residence in Buziga, as we hear in this report. Uganda may go the poor be. Emeritus Professor George Wilson Kanyaihamba filed the petition with law students against the Attorney General, President Yorega Gutam Seven, and the ruling NRM party. Kanyaihamba with five students, Nabuyamba John Solomon, Bosa Edwin Price, Wavamono Alexa Simwe, Ronald William, and Senyunga Simon are challenging present his move to scrap bail and the life imprisonment sentence to capital offense offenders. Although constitutional court led by Justice Catherine Bam Gemeleire had set 16th June 2021 for hearing of the petition, the petitioners did not appear in court and the hearing was adjourned. Professor Kanye Hamba expressed concern over the adjournment in his absence. My Lord, nevertheless, during conferencing, we were informed that um, the first petitioner is in this post and that will not make it in court for medical reasons. My Lord, for that reason, our prayer would be that um, the petition is adjourned to any other convenient session. How can they adjourn it? Because the proceeding is, they've been consulting us at every level, and therefore they should have consulted us. I was in court asking the registrar, asking the chief judge, the deputy chief judge of Uganda. Professor Kanyaihamba also refutes allegations by some newspapers that he withdrew his petition from court. When Museveni withdrew, a young lady wrote in the newspaper, and you read it, that Kanyaihamba has withdrawn his petition. It was a blatant lie, fraudulent, and somebody ought to be hanged for it. What kind of Ugandans are you when you can let, let these things happen? Following the absence of the petitioners in court in the last court sitting, Court of Appeal has now indicated 24th June 2022 to hear Hamba's petition. Let this day, attended by all of you journalists and the pressmen, with the two of us representing six petitioners, let this day be known in the history of Uganda. In the petition, Professor George Wilson Kanyai Hamba and five others want court to hold all the discussions aimed at scrapping and amending the rules governing bail to capital offenders. Deborah Namamonde, UBC News. Can... With Justice Kanyai Hamba's story, we come to the end of our first segment. Let's take a short break. On return, we have more. It's UBC News tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Get connected today with the My Airtel 4G smartphone and enjoy free data for one whole year worth 86,500 Uganda shillings. That's free 2GB for the first month and free 1GB for the next 11 months at only 250,000 Uganda shillings with free data for one whole year worth 86,500 shillings, making the effective price of the 4G phone 163,500 shillings only. Airtel, the smartphone network Audible packages great entertainment tea sports the local board telenovela the movies there is something for everybody everybody go tv this is where our best stories live the best entertainment for any budget with go tv you will have great entertainment for as little as 13,000 uganda shillings per month go tv great stories zidiwano go tv uganda love it the tales of kasozi brought to you by uganda communications commission 
Hello, this is Kasozi. How can I help you? Congratulations, congratulations. Oh, one good day. One good day? But I haven't entered any competition. Oh, Dechi, since you use your phone every day, we have randomly selected you as one of our loyal customers and you have won a brand new pickup. Hey, so how do I get this pickup? The pickup is in Namave. All we have to do is quickly bring it to you. You know, we are delivering many of them. So, just send us 100k for fuel via mobile money and we'll bring it to you. But Chief, I'm in no hurry to receive it. Namambe is just here. Keep it at your warehouse, give me directions and I will get time to pick it up. Ah, vow now we. If you don't have money, just say. Tonfera, never send money to strangers. Winners of competitions are contacted through official channels and are never asked to pay for anything. Stay tuned for what Kasozi does next. Tonfera, refrain from unnecessary engagement with strangers over the phone. This message is powered by UCC, MTN, Airtel, Bank of Uganda and NPSP Association. A World Cup in the desert? The first one in the Middle East? The first to be held at the end of the year? That's crazy! Get ready for spectacular moves. High flying saves. Unbelievable goals. Out of this world celebration. Would you believe it? What a moment here! All 64 matches live. That's over 5,000 action-packed minutes of the FIFA 2022 World Cup Qatar. Now that's crazy. Catch all the action only on Supersport, your world of champions. On Gold TV, love it. Meet Professor Petero. He knows something every hustler in UG is gonna love. Oh, see. You say I was just trying to uh, get the document to register for Airtel Management. You don't need the documents. You just say it for register. <laughs> He sells things from the shop and behind my back he gets the money and gives it to his Google friends. <laughs> but just get out all money pay so that all money comes direct to your business wallet and only you, the owner, have access to it. Just now, star 185, star 10, star 10, hash and now you are on. No waiting. <laughs> huh? This insanity is sweet. Give them also. I only take Airtel Money Pay. It's easy and secure. Yes, become a safer and more efficient cash free business today. Easy. No mixing your business money with your Kameza money. No, that's efficient. Airtel Money. Instant, secure, borderless. The oil and gas moment brought to you by Petroleum Authority of Uganda. Creating lasting value in Uganda's oil journey. In order to be contracted to supply goods and services for oil activities in Uganda, you must register on the National Suppliers Database. Between 2017 and 2021, close to 400 Ugandan entities were awarded various contracts to supply goods and services to the sector. Uh, Tech Club Limited is a geosciences company that has been offering uh, geotechnical and geophysical investigation services to the East African market since its inception in uh, 2002. Our experience working with AMA Energy has been a pleasurable one. Uh, the seismic surveys have always been on our radar and when this opportunity came up we put together a winning bid and became the first Ugandan company to provide seismic services under an oil and gas contract in Uganda. Registration on the National Suppliers Database is free. Visit www.pau.go.ug Creating lasting value in Uganda's oil journey. Thank you so much for watching. It's UBC News tonight. Security has been tightened in the two sitting examination centers in Karamoja subregion as nurses and midwives start their end of semester exams across the country. The Ugandan Nurses and Midwifery Examination Center with Uganda People's Defense Forces are working closely together. Nurses and midwife students from 113 institutions across the country have started end of semester exams. 
This is the 33 series of exams organized by Uganda Nurses and Midwives Examinations Board, UNMEB, and the ninth in the semester system. But we have four certificate programs, that is certificate in nursing, certificate in midwifery, certificate in comprehensive nursing, and certificate in mental health nursing. Due to insecurities in Karamoja sub-region, UNMEB and UPDF are working closely to safeguard the nurses and midwives during the examinations. They went with them from Soroti to Kabong and they arrived very safely and they are also going to collect them after the final examination of practicals from Kabong to Soroti. The Kabongo army is the one which has taken over their security. I want to thank God for the responsibility government has to its own people and all its objectives. Over 53,000 registered for the exams, among whom 5,870 are diploma candidates and over 47,000 certificates. The in-charge examinations, Nasi Wajuriet says, in all the 113 examination centers, they haven't yet experienced any challenge. Our examinations were delivered to the respective police stations where they are supposed to be kept under safe custody starting on Saturday and yesterday and center coordinators are supposed to pick them from these police stations and return the answered scripts to the same police stations. Some institutions in Kampala, including Mlago School of Nursing and Midwifery, Chibuli School of Nursing and Midwifery, and Mengo School of Nursing and Midwifery, tell the progress. Certificates are 24, then we have five extension mid nurses, then nine midwives. All the students are comfortably doing their papers and we are happy with it. And even all the examiners are doing their work. I am Natang Rebecca and Senable Anthony for UBC News. The Director of Mobilization at the National Resistance Movement Secretariat at Chedon Road, Rosemary Nansu Gasaninde, wants party members to prepare for the by-elections in the areas where the courts nullified and directed uh, the National Election Electoral Commission to organize by-elections. She cautioned party members to work together to win these forthcoming races. <laughs> NRM party has returned to organize members on election following court nullifying winners through petitions. As court directs the electoral commission to organize the by-elections, it means new contestants in the race. The director mobilization at the NRM secretariat, Rosemary Seninde, has tipped party members and supporters on winning political positions. She was officiating at NRM Omoyo Gwegwanga Ogutafa pressure group function in Impigi district. To the people in those areas where we are going to have a by-election to remember that they should vote for people who are going to work with the ruling government because it is of no use to vote for somebody who is going to, you know, to keep opposing government programs. They will not benefit. Therefore, it is important they vote for somebody who is going to work with the ruling government. She advised the general public to support government programs that alleviate poverty. Up with the parish model, the parish development model program. This program is very good for the people because we have appreciated that it's going to help those people, especially the people who are still engaging in uh, in uh, peasantry. So the government is intending to get them out of poverty, but. The NRM mobilizer, Central Region, Serubiri Frank, commended the party secretariat for the campaign. <laughs> The task now hits at returning disgruntled members, which will enable the party regain its fame in Uganda. Brian Tumwinebiaruhanga, Salongo Kasibante,
Today in History On 20th June 1971, Satito Gafabo Sawinyi IV, then Omukama of Bunyoro till the abolition of kingdoms in 1967, died at Mulago Hospital at the age of 84. He was a son to Chwatu Kabalega. Before becoming a king, he served as a sub-county chief in Bunyoro, and later, in 1924, he was enthroned as the Omukama, succeeding his brother Andrea Duhaga. The Kabaka Birthday Run 2022 is back on Sunday, 3rd July 2022 at Lubiri Mengo. This year, the run will be physical and will be flagged off by Sabasaja Yakabaka at 7 a.m. Come out in large numbers once again to Lubiri Mengo. Run for a cause to fight and end HIV by 2030. Buy your ticket today at 15,000 Uganda shillings from Airtel Shops at Tobani Center, New Taxi Park, ShopRite Building, Benchwanka Street, Majestic Brands office at Bulange Mango. You can also buy your ticket using Airtel Money. Dial star 185 star 5 hash. Select payments, select Kabaka Run, and follow the prompts to complete the payment. Kabaka Birthday Run 2022 is brought to you by UNAID, CBS, BBS, and Airtel, the smartphone network. Water gives life. Water is life. But not all water is created equal. Refresh yourself with the new quality Nirvana Package drinking water and fuel you and your passion to go further in life. Visit a shop near you and grab a 250 ml at 500 shillings, 500 ml at 1000 shillings, 1 1.5 liters at 2000 shillings, or the 20 liter jumbo bottle. Nirvana is a product of Crown Beverages Limited, the makers of Pepsi products. UBC News Tonight, we now talk business. Uganda Revenue Authority has started engaging the public on budget matters. According to John Mosingu, the Commissioner General URA, the sensitization dialogue, which has started with Kampala, is aimed at breaking down the budget and appreciate the new amendments together. Over 25 trillion shillings of the fiscal year 2022-2023 budget which is about 53% of the budget, will be financed from tax and non-tax revenue sourced internally and the rest from aid and grants. This is a challenge that the revenue body has to take on. There are no new taxes. And yet, there is a high increment on the domestic revenue target. So, that leaves us with only one option, that we must efficiently collect more revenues from within the country and we must mobilize more stakeholders to join us in this effort so that together we can rise up to that challenge. If everybody is to pay their fair share voluntarily, the target is achievable, says Ramadan Gobi, the Permanent Secretary, Minister of Finance. He adds that government will in the forthcoming financial year use a dual strategy to manage debt and mobilize significant revenue. We borrow strictly for projects, productive projects, and also we are sequencing these projects now. Those projects which are not ready to absorb money, we have already identified them. We are going to review them, cancel some of them, which are not likely to deploy the money on time so that we avoid uh, making Ugandans pay a huge debt for projects which are not going to add value to their lives. The national budget goal is to transform 39% of households in subsistence into money economy, support business and economic recovery, and protect households from rising prices of essential goods using prudent policies that are sustainable. We encourage our people that Uganda is at this point in time at, at almost the, having the best opportunity to transform ourselves. We are going to utilize these so-called shocks, so-called crises as opportunities. Uganda Revenue Authority's ultimate national aspiration is to attain economic independence where the national expenditure is fully funded domestically. We, we will work towards uh, expanding the tax base 
So that is one area of focus. Number two is the human resource uh, area of focus. Dennis Igor and Brian Verohanga for UBC News. Maintaining environmental health and safety requires multi-sectoral collaboration, says Douglas Nkonge, Assistant Commissioner, Ministry of Gender and Labor. Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development. While addressing staff at Cipla Quality Chemicals at the launch uh, company's Health and Safety Week, Nkonge said that although government has set rules and guidelines for manufacturers' enforcement by the duty bearers is lacking. Many organizations in Uganda have an occupational health and safety standards. However, they are not enforced. Lack of enforcement puts the workers at risk and can as well harm the environment. The human capital is very important and when you look after them well, then they will produce more. You, you reap what you, 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 you have sown. Mm -hmm. So it is really very important and I encourage even other uh, employers or facilities that have not taken it up, except and it has a very important effect of production. The Assistant Commissioner, Minister of Gender and Labor, made this appeal to the business community at the launch of the annual CIPLA Quality Chemicals Health and Safety Week in Luzira. CIPLA Quality Chemicals, a pharmaceutical manufacturing company, has over the years focused on sustainability of their operations. We're targeting sustainability significantly and, and the main focus is how we become as an organization water neutral, electric, uh, GHG emission neutral as well as waste neutral over 2025. And that's the focus area. We have taken progressive target year on year to reduce the burden on the Mother Earth. And by 2025, we are targeting that to become a neutral organization in terms of sustainability initiatives. This year's Safety, Environmental Health and Safety Week is on the theme, Act Together to Build a Strong Environmental Sustainability and Health Culture. Dennis Igor for UBC News. In sport, the annual Decode Chess Championship has climaxed with excellent players rewarded. The championship was hosted by Aga Khan Education Services in Kampala, as we see in this report. The championship was hosted at Aga Khan Education Services in Kampala and attracted more than 250 players, ranging from the age of 8 to 18. I can say the quality has been so high. Personally, I'm impressed. These kids are playing high-level chess. I think we should give applause to the coaches. They are doing some uh, fantastic work. Most of these kids know the rules, and that is key. You cannot play a game without knowing the technical regulations. I'm impressed to say. Ultimately, Elijah Akandinda won the boys' under-8 category, while Doru Catherine triumphed among the girls. In the under-10 category, Kisto Jaden Mubiru won the boys' wing, while the girls were bettered by Anwatha Haresh. Under 12 was won by Jonathan Indaula and Nanteza Gabriela, while a boys under 16 had Daniel Dokoria triumph as Namiro Penny aged all girls. In the under 18 category, Ethan Chigund was unstoppable among the boys, while Tendo Nawabi was excellent among the girls in this Stanbic Bank sponsored championship. For being part of a chess tournament, a chess competition, with a young lad that is out here, that is learning to grow, 
with our critical skills and the many skills that are around chess. We are honored and we are glad to be here. We are always here, we will always be here. The tournament organizers decode Chess Academy used the moment to launch a book called The Chess Touch. The Chess Touch is about to educate the chess players, the theory part of it, such that they integrate the, what's on the board and what's uh, in the theory, to know more the knowledge about chess. Twelve-year-old Manzi Manuche, who opted to play among the 14-year-olds, emerged triumphant, while the girls Gong and the under-14 went to Nancha Janiel. John Burns, Sentamu, reporting. And still in sports, women football team, the Crested uh, Cranes, uh, will fly out this Tuesday, that is tomorrow, for a training camp in Morocco. Uh, the 10 days training camp in Morocco is in line with the Africa Cup of Nations tournament due on the 2nd of July, still in Morocco. Uganda in Group A alongside hosts, Morocco, Burkina Faso and Senegal will play their first game on the 3rd of July. Head coach George William Lutalo believes the final squad will put up a performance. Been doing all of the activities. It's really impressing and we hope to have a good team. Maybe in the few days to come is when we shall raise the, uh, the squad that we shall travel with. But for those who will not have traveled with the team, and even for those who will have traveled with the team, they are all national team players. Let's keep them in good, uh, good areas. We pray for them. We, have, we, we hope to raise a strong team that will play when we reach there. In our group, whichever team is there has already qualified and they are all good teams. But for us, we are focused. We've prepared ourselves. We have to deliver according to our expectations. Thank you. There is three. There is four. There is five. Whatever you That is all we had for you at this point. Thank you so much for watching. We'll have a bigger arrangement at 10 p.m. My name is Michael Jordan Lukoma with Elizabeth Nakakon. Let's catch you then. For now, enjoy the evening and bye-bye. The Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, Uganda Revenue Authority and Partners invite you to the post-budget breakfast conference to take place on 20th June 2022 at Hotel Africana, Kampala from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. We shall thereafter hold other regional engagements on 28th June 2022 in Barara, Fort Porto, Gulu, Arua and Tororo. This year's theme, full monetization of Uganda's economy through commercial agriculture, industrialization, market access and digital transformation. Uganda Revenue Authority. Developing Uganda together. Fellow citizens, thank you for diligently and consistently honoring your tax obligations. It is through your collective contribution that the government is able to provide social services. In spite of the simultaneous global crises that have hit our livelihoods and businesses, you have proven